Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of MWN Weather Facts. I'm Chris Hardy with MemphisWeather.net, and today we're going to be talking about some basic hydrology. We're also going to be discussing uh, the rivers and how they can vary from higher water levels and lower water levels and what exactly causes that. So getting started, let's just talk about the major contributing factor to these water levels, and that is rainfall. Rainfall is the major contributing factor to the rising of water levels, and the higher water levels are more common in the springtime, and this is because of snow melting from northern areas and running off into a river. So as you can see over here on the right, we have the water cycle, and as you can see, precipitation, it falls um, onto a northern area, and once springtime rolls around, that snow will melt, and it will run off downstream and collect into a river, and if there is more precipitation, then of course that water will not only rise, but it could also flood. So local effects will only occur in areas where the rain falls into tributaries. Now tributaries are streams of water that feeds into a larger stream of a river, as you can see in these pictures. Those little things off to the side from the river that kind of look like veins, those are tributaries. Larger rivers will be fed by those tributaries, uh, but they respond at a lower rate, or a slower rate. Tributaries, they get the effects right then and there when it happens, but a river will slowly take on those effects over time. So, for example, if rain fell in Memphis, it wouldn't affect the Mississippi River right there at that time, but it would affect a river that is more downstream from Memphis. So, tributaries, they will get those effects right when the rainfall happens, but bigger river systems like the Mississippi River, those will happen at more slower rates. So now on the opposite side of the spectrum, when no rainfall is occurring, there can be many effects from that as well. When drought conditions are current, rivers can reach lower water levels, as you can see in these pictures below. These effects can also take a while to happen, just how it can take when flooding occurs. So like I said, rivers will take a long time for those uh, effects to happen. If there's no rainfall or if there is rainfall, it will happen over a period of time. It won't happen right then and there in the moment. So let's talk about the Mississippi River stages specifically. As you can see on the right here, this is the Mississippi River along with its several contributing streams or smaller rivers. Um, these streams have control over how high or how low the river will be. And if you can see off to the right, uh, one of those rivers is the Ohio River, which has the Ohio Basin, and it is a major contributor to the water levels that are in the lower Mississippi Valley. So now let's look at more local river stages. Uh, the Mississippi River, we can look at a comparison between uh, when it was at a higher level and when it was at a lower level. So the Mississippi River, it has seen record highs and lows over time, which can be observed in Memphis. The river approached a near record high water level in May 2011, which is pictured on the left below. And right now we are currently seeing record low levels uh, right now during October of this year. Um, and that can be pictured over on the right. And there is almost a difference of 60 feet between these two records, which is very amazing to think about. It's crazy to see how drastic water can change a river from looking like something on the left to looking like how it is now over on the right. But yeah, that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new or something interesting about hydrology and the river systems. Once again, I am Chris Hardy with MemphisWeather.net, and thank you all for watching.